Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video we will cover how peri-workout protein timing may influence body composition. First and foremost, let's establish what exactly we mean when referring to peri-workout nutrition. Quite simply, this refers to the intake of food in relation to our resistance training sessions. This involves food eaten before, during, or after training and the exact proximity relative to the session. For this video specifically, we will be focusing on the impact of protein being consumed around our workout. There are many theories about peri-workout nutrition and how it may impact changes in body composition. However, most of these theories are debunked when we control for total daily protein intake. So as long as total daily protein intake is adequate, the timing around training is not nearly as important. However, there may be some potential influence that peri-workout protein intake can have on muscle growth. As we mentioned in the previous video, when we ingest protein, this is broken down into amino acids which circulate the bloodstream. It seems that around the time of resistance training, it may be a good idea to have a high level of readily available amino acids in the bloodstream. This may have a slight additional hypertrophic effect compared with ingesting the same total daily protein intake without timing it around your training. This may be due to a greater muscle protein synthesis response or simply having readily available amino acids to immediately begin the growth and repair process. We also know that the classic theory that there is a one hour anabolic window of opportunity after training is not true. This theory suggests that trainees must consume a high protein feeding, usually a protein shake, within one hour of finishing your resistance training session, otherwise you have missed out on some potential gains. While this theory makes some sense because we want readily available amino acids in the bloodstream after training, it fails to consider the time frame of amino acid availability. What this means is that amino acid levels stay elevated in the bloodstream for multiple hours depending on how much protein was consumed. This means that blood amino acid levels are probably still going to be elevated beyond baseline levels if we ate a few hours ago. So during a resistance training session, we probably still have fairly high amino acid availability, assuming we have eaten a meal earlier that day. The other factor that this theory fails to consider is the time frame of the hypertrophy process. The hypertrophy process is not an immediate adaptation that occurs straight after resistance training. It is usually a multi-day process. This means that we probably need a fairly consistent supply of amino acids each and every day to assist with the adaptation process rather than simply a protein feeding after training. Let's take a look at this graph to demonstrate this idea. As we can see here, this trainee consumes three protein feedings per day where blood amino acid levels increase significantly above baseline and then take a few hours to come back down to baseline. So even though a trainee may not consume a protein shake immediately post-training, they probably still have a high concentration of amino acids available in the bloodstream before, during, and after training, assuming they aren't training in a fasted state. Furthermore, the adaptation process is a multi-day time scale, which means that trainees will need amino acid availability throughout the rest of the day and for multiple days after training. So what does this tell us from a practical point of view? Quite simply, we should understand that peri-workout protein intake is a minute detail compared with total daily protein intake. However, we probably still want to ensure that we eat high protein feedings in some close succession to resistance training to ensure that there is a decent supply of amino acids in the bloodstream during and after training. Trainees should aim to consume a high protein feeding within around two hours before and after training. If trainees are already splitting their total daily protein intake across three to six meals per day, this may already be achieved without even considering it. However, the importance of peri-workout protein timing becomes greater if trainees are training in a fasted state. If this is the case, trainees may want to consume a high protein feeding immediately after training because blood amino acid levels will likely be very low. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.